Race walker Evan Dunphy beat the Tokyo Heat and Humidity to win bronze. The 30-year-old from BC came in third in what could be the last ever Olympic 50-kilometer race walk event. This is because the IOC is dropping the event for the Summer Games program. Dunphy's bronze is his first Olympic medal after just missing out on the podium in Rio in 2016. He placed fourth in that event. And bronze medalist Evan Dunphy joins me now from Tokyo. Evan, congratulations on your bronze medal win. How does it feel? Uh, yeah, I, I think it has. It's one of those things where it's, I've been working towards this for, for so long, and um, it's, it's, it's here now, and I think there's just a, 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 a real moment of uh, contentment with it now. I think I'm just sort of sitting in that content phase of like, okay, wow, it's, I did it. Uh, you know, we're, we're here, and... Um, I think the celebration phase will come when I get home and get to share it with my family and my friends and, and all that. But right now, we're just a huge sigh of like, ha, ah, we did it. So take us through the race. Unlike a lot of other Olympic events, which are over in seconds, your race goes on and on. How did you kick it into a higher gear? Yeah, you know, I, I think someone tweeted early, at me earlier today that it's 1,400 times longer than Andre's 100-meter uh, uh, time that he was out there for. Um, this is what we train for. This is what I, I work towards day in and day out, um, just preparing myself for for that last 10 kilometers of a, of a 50K race. And, um, you know, it's it's it really just comes down to 6,000, 7,000 kilometers of walking every year for you know, for years and years and years to, to get my body into the position where it can do this sort of thing. And what are you thinking about during all that time? Oh, uh, um, you know, it's, it's a, one of those funny races where early on you, you feel pretty good. So myself and the Australian Ridian Cowley, who I'm good friends with and, and training partners with, we were chatting away for a little bit at the beginning of the race. And, you know, it's not really until, uh, until about 25, 30 K where you really start to lock in. And at that point I was just focusing on all the cues that my physiotherapist, Mary Lou Lamy has given me to stay technically as strong as possible. And just thinking about, you know, I spent a lot of time thinking about my, my, fam my family and my friends back home who were walking, you know, every step of the way with me and, and pushing me on. And uh, I, I derived a ton of energy from them today. And, uh, and so that was, that was sort of at the forefront of my mind. Evan, you've been outspoken after the IOC announced that this event is finished at the Olympics. Why are they getting rid of it? Yeah, I, I mean, it's heartbreaking that this is the last 50K event. Uh, I think we've shown time and time again that this event has tremendous value. It's incredibly exciting. Um, it's riveting. You know, the amount of people that, I, that I've seen that sort of said, oh, you know, I kind of, I kind of put this on in the background and then... Half an hour later, I was on the edge of my she edge of my seat, yelling at the TV for for three hours. Um, it, it has this ability to capture, um, you know, capture people's attention and and, and draw them in. And um, yeah, you know, it, it looks a little funny, but uh, I, I do think it has tremendous value. And and unfortunately, as a as a free event that uh, doesn't require any infrastructure, um, the IOC hates that. You know, they want to they want to make money. And uh, race walking doesn't do that, unfortunately. So, you know, I, they they hide under the guise of, um, you know, it's it's not a it's it's something not something that kids will watch. But you know, I had I had my little cousins in New Zealand who took the day off of had a sick day at school so they could stay home and watch the whole thing. I heard from uh, my physiotherapist, ten year old daughter who who watched the entire thing start to finish and was just so inspired by it. And I can't imagine how many other little boys and little girls out, out there that that tuned into this and got inspired by it. And uh, you know, so I, I think it's just a, a travesty that this is the last one. And uh, you know, it's, it was. It was great to be a part of, but it's incredibly bittersweet. So where does that leave you? What's next for you? Uh, you know, I'm very steadfast in, in our world championships next year. It'll be a 35 kilometer, so not quite 50, not quite like, you know, the endure part of endurance uh, as the 50K is, but our world championships are, are in Eugene. So from my home in Richmond, it's uh, it's actually closer um, than I am right now in Sapporo to the Olympics in Tokyo. So it'll feel like a home World Championships, so I'm really gunning towards that and, and excited to get my friends and my family who couldn't be here in, in Japan um, out to that one to, to cheer me on. So that's kind of where my thoughts are right now. And then beyond that, we'll just kind of see. I just, you know, might might stick around and, and, and work towards another Olympics, or I might try to find other ways to, um, you know, be a valuable asset in my community. And you mentioned a celebration. What's the plan for you when you get back home? Oh, I don't know yet. I... I um... Uh, 
in in Japan here, we've been so locked down, um, appropriately so, with our training not being able to kind of train as we wish and and being on really restricted routes. And and so I'm looking so f I'm so looking forward to just walking out my front door and going for a walk on the streets of Richmond and uh, and interacting with the community. I've I've really been missing that. So um, I, it's kind of cheesy, but honestly, the first the, one of the things I'm looking forward to most is going for a walk. Bronze medalist Evan Dunphy, congratulations again. All the best and safe travels back home. Hey, thank you so much.